Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to A Servant's Heart. I just wanted to come to you quickly as we continue Bible prophecy. And today this one is uh, titled The Beginning of Something We Have Never Encountered in America. And so um, these prophecies are coming to pass very quickly and uh, my... and. Uh, the Lord has given me a time period to get them out, and so here they are. This was given to me October the 5th of 2015, the beginning of something we have never encountered in America. So, I'm going to begin the word, and then I'm going to give you some scriptures that you can check out for yourself. As with all things, take to prayer, go to the Holy Spirit. Uh, for yourself and make sure that you have a personal relationship, an intimate relationship with Christ. So here we go. Now, when I was given this, um, the Lord had been speaking to me quite a lot back in that time. And so, so many things were beginning to be taking place and write, written up so that, again, like many things, they've already been in writing, signed, sealed, ready to go. They don't have to take time uh, to sign it and get it up. It's already there and waiting. So here we go. The abomination of desolation... These are the words and the things he gave me. Secret meetings being done. Secret rituals having already taken place. Many American citizens will be slaughtered and the river of blood will flow, just as many in Israel will be slaughtered. Many will come to realize from my word that if I, the Lord, did not intercede, then all of mankind would be wiped out. And then back when I received this, it was the 1st of October that my husband and I, as we were getting ready for bed, there was a heavy darkness that came over our whole place. And I'd never, never felt anything. It came over every place in our room, and it was just like tar. Just like tar, it was so deep, and it was so dark. And... um as, as I was feeling this and seeing it, I jumped up, I ran out of the room, and I said to my husband, I said, I know what this is. This is the spiritual darkness that is going to fall upon the earth. This is the darkness that we're in right now, and it's ex accelerating. At that time, we had to do some spiritual warfare. I mean, very serious warfare, because it, was, it wasn't a good feeling. And I even went in to prayer mode and asked others to pray as well. Um, it came in my spirit very strongly that these words and this tack would be coming against our nations. And that it was warning for believers to armor up and be ready. This was going to be the beginning of something that we had never encountered in America. A vision then was given to me as an interpretation of a word I received toward the end of that September in 2015, which is as follows. As I went to sleep, I heard a loud shot go off. It was very loud, but it was no shot. It was an EMP attack, and America was being fired upon. This, they came out of nowhere, Many people did not even have a chance to engage in the warfare because it came so quick and unexpected. Quickly, it changed. Then I was taken above the USA, and I saw devastation like I'd never seen before. It was a war zone. Blood-soaked bodies of men, women, and children were lying in the streets. Buildings were blown away. By then, there was no electricity. The waters were bloody red, and I mean everywhere. Just like some people have seen over the few years, they've seen red waters. 
the food was very contaminated. You couldn't eat any of it. And at that time, there were very few sources of food. I saw many ghost-like towns, and evil throughout the land was corrupt. It seemed to have no end. It went on and on, no matter where I looked. These were quick. I mean, it was like things were happening. One at a, one, I saw something here in one place, then it was another one. So the, these were things that were not letting up. They were accelerating, as I said, I've said before. Then I saw battalions ready for battle. That was another one. Army brigades, if you will. Some were dressed like knights, like the battles and wars of long ago. History was repeating itself over and over again. Okay, next one. This is like I said, these are going one, two, three, just quickly all over. It was like I was being shown all over the U.S. Then I saw a man's face, Vladimir Putin. He was smiling, but with a calm and a determined look, like that of a Cheshire cat who planned his moves wisely and his strategies with skill. Then I saw buildings with foreclosure signs, another another window, if, if I may call it that. These were different intervals, different scenes. Uh, but then I saw buildings with foreclosure signs, torn out windows, chain locked doors, and signs that read, Keep Out. These that had once been church buildings. They were now nothing. Then next thing, I saw skies opening, but the color and the noise was so loud. Then a man appeared with other men, and in startling colored robes, smiling people were just gazing upward. They were drawn almost like magnets. Then I heard, it's not him, it's not him, it's a fake. But people were oblivious to the cries and their zeal to be taken and what they thought was the real rapture. But it was actually a false one. Some people were trampled on and killed. Some were pushed and thrown to one side. This was a false rapture. Then the vision moved quickly and it was over. Now, those were several scenarios or scenes that were given to me all at the same time. I went, went from one to another. One would end, the next one would begin. In conjunction with this vision and all these visions and words, whoa, hallelujah, other warnings have come for a very long time. From the scriptures, from the prophets, from messengers, from dreams, visions, in the spirit, visitations from the Lord, Yet, does anyone really listen? See, I said that way back in 2015. Just like today, is anyone really caring? Is anyone really listening? And then I heard the Lord say this. I have commanded you to be holy as I am holy, and to live as I have lived. Can this be done? Yes. As you anchor yourself in my word, as you set aside a day and time every day to be alone with me, as you set aside time to pray and fast and be determined in your mind to do this, I have seen this in very few. I am God and I will not be mocked. There is a time now when all is at hand and must be fulfilled, talking about today. There is a time when those that are holy will be holy, and those that are unrighteous will remain unrighteous. Let your decision be made now. Talking about today again. I have already come down from heaven and have seen the truth as to what has taken place on earth. The Lord is moving about. He is working, even now. No longer shall I give my hand to protection on a nation and nations that rise against me in evil. No longer will I call you blessed. <clears throat> Your abominations far exceed the limits of tempting me. Let me go on. <clears throat> he continued, Right, therefore, what my word says, and tell the people, and in the first day there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No man of work shall be done, 
in them say that which every man must eat. That only may be done. You may also follow up with Leviticus 23.2 and Numbers 28.26. And uh, these scriptures are going to be... Um, you, you can, if you want to go over them, you can catch them in the website. Also, you may can read, um, I said Leviticus 23, 2 to 3, Numbers 28 to 26. And then he continues. <clears throat> Tell the people, abortion, your unholy allegiance to an unholy nation, USA, same-sex marriage, and the rainbow, my covenant. And your drawback from my nation of Israel. These are unholy abominations. Tell, my, tell the people that punishment and judgment will come now and in the days to come. I will avenge whom I will avenge and have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Because of your own speculations your own opinions, do you think you can make them happen? The skies will fall, the earth will shake, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will acknowledge me as Lord and Savior. Do not put your trust in what is coming, and who or what is being said. Not all of it will happen like so many think. Many of you think you have it all figured out. You use my word as a tool to cause others to stumble. I call you fools. Don't you know only I can make it happen? Don't you know it is not over until I say it is? Do not try and figure all this out in your own minds, but occupy and bring the full counsel to the lowly, the unlovely, the unreachable, and the least of these. You yearn to be taken up, but yet have you occupied and done as I have asked? Too many think only of themselves and do not care about others. Yet everyone do I see. The gospel will reach across this dying nation and nations, and every word will be fulfilled before my coming. Are you sure that your lamp is filled? Then you may want to read Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19. These abominations have already reached their limit. The Lord Almighty is ready to spew out his judgments on the world like never before. Humble yourselves before he has to do it. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Uh, that will be Deuteronomy 4.24. Also Deuteronomy 32.25. Also, 2 Corinthians 13.5 The above scriptures means to examine or look at yourself. Are we counterfeits? Are we genuine believers or fakes? Retrobates comes from the Greek word adokimio, which means fakes. Will we know who is genuine and who isn't? You may also read Revelation 22.10-11 and here are the key points that came into my spirit after this. God will never leave us nor forsake us if we are truly a born-again believer. This is a heads up to start spending ample, quality, serious time alone with the Lord for the times ahead. Each of us must examine ourselves and check ourselves by confessing and talking to the Lord daily and working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We must use our spiritual armor and do warfare. Much power is lacking in the churches today because nothing is taught about this. We leave ourselves wide open to spiritual attacks, some to which we are not aware. I leave this open that as a body of believers we need to be discipling, going out to the unlovable or to those that need to know. All of us want to go home. But again, 
But again, the Lord is asking us to occupy and do these things, whatever way and wherever you can and however it's set up to be able to do so. Remember where we came from. Remember originally where we came from, how we were before God came and we gave our lives to him. How did we hear about Jesus? In the same way, other people need a chance to hear as well. God is going to purify his church and put it back to its original order. Please take everything I have said to the Lord. And I'm going to make a stand here because I have known God has told me, you know, we have to decide who we are going to serve and, and stand. Because right now, today, this word is a, just a part, part of many things that the Lord has given me. But I'm going to say this. We see all this. God is looking at every sin. God is looking at every life. He knows and is well aware of what is going on down here. What's going on in his church? The debauchery, the falseness, the perverted gospels, the perverted teaching of who God is truly and is. And now we have Satan who has risen up to bring about the different uh, uh, pestilence and all these things that are coming upon the earth. Why? Because the Lord said he wants to shame us. He wants to bring us down. He wants us to doubt and fear. He wants us to be ashamed of who we are, of the gospel. And it doesn't help any when you go out or even when you're on the internet or wherever you are and people falsely accuse you. They make mockery of you. They're skeptical. They gossip. They do all these things. It's a back and forth thing. There's no... It keeps going on and on. And God sees all this. And we wonder why when we are being pitted against each other in the church. Why the church is not able to function as it should. So this is what I say. And I'm saying this. And I hope the powers to be understand my humbleness, but at the same time my sincerity. Especially over this about being shamed. Here is my stand with Christ, the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. I will not be shamed into bowing down to Satan. Which comes in many ways. Satan is trying to cause the people to bow down to him to stop living for Christ, to get weary, to doubt, to get angry. And I'm saying for myself, not speaking for anyone else, everyone has a free choice. I will not be shamed into bowing to Satan or into giving in. I will not. I will not. And if you want to know some of God's power, you can also check out Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 31. These were the verses given to me after this. Isaiah 42, verses 8 to 9, and Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19. And what I want to say is also, God has been giving me uh, the, the words that the path is narrowing. In other words, the gate is very narrow now. So many are not finding it. So that means we need to be seeing who we are with, who we are allowing in our lives, who we are going to allow to come, come into our homes, our churches, our even our places of worship, whatever it is, who's going to be friends. Because some of them are truly besieged with a lot of, of baggage, which in this hour, we're not going to be able to take care of. We can't get so deeply involved in everybody's life that we end up getting off what God has for us. That doesn't mean we don't pray or that we stop talking to them, but it means we cannot get deceived, nor can we get distracted in this hour. And that since the path is narrowing, that means the people, brothers and sisters, Whoever it may be, loving family or not, we have to be very careful. We may have to disconnect from many people, from many videos, from many Christian uh, meetings and organizations, even on YouTube. You know, 
God said it's, it's narrow. We'll have to be careful now. Because words that are being spoken, the Lord said, are being just given out there. And it's going to be dangerous. And we're putting ourselves out there. And sometimes we're doing it without being aware. So be very careful. God has been cautioning me. And I want to caution you also be careful about what you put out on social media. Make sure that the Lord has released it to be out there, has released you to give it. There are some things that God is giving to his prophets, giving to his messenger, whatever, that are not even to be released right now or at all. Some things are better kept to yourself because others are not ready to receive it or they're skeptical. Don't put yourself in the line of attack so easily. The path is narrow. And you're going to have to narrow your circle of friends, brothers, sisters, loved ones, or whatever. Because, because God is saying this connection is coming in a lot of places. Better to have a few than a whole bunch. Because this isn't why we go on here to get a lot of likes or dislikes or follow. We go on here to serve God. And I just, I have just pushed everything to the side. I don't even feel like I belong here. I've just pushed it all to the side. I don't listen to what anybody is saying right now too much. I don't listen to the um, people that may be skeptical or they don't agree. That's fine. Go on with what you're doing. Go on with it. I'm serving God the best way I know how. And I want to make sure that my mouth, my hands, my eyes, are in where God wants them to be and not all over the place and not elsewhere. We're coming into a very devastating time. Much more than what this is that's going on now. And it's very, very serious. I had a very heavy heart. Today I'm grieving because of the seriousness. I know the day of prayer is here. Many are not repenting. And God says, I am requiring, this is not an option, I am requiring national repentance. And he is not getting that. So, let it be what it is. Let it go on. God knows what is going to take place and what he's going to allow to happen and to do. All we can do is pray. Pray. Pray that you, where you are to be where you are to be. Keep your focus on Him. And don't allow anyone to take your focus off what God is doing, whether you're in ministry or not. Narrow is the path. The gate is narrow. That, that means God is expediting and things are happening. So I'm going to get off of here. I, I, I am not open for comments right now. I'm narrowing the comments. Maybe I will put them back on if the Lord wants, but he said, narrow, narrow all these things. So that is what I'm doing. The website is always under, in the description box under the video. You can contact us at will, or all our contact information is on there if you want to contact us. But I'm doing what the Lord has told me, and I am at peace now. Really, I was before, but even more so. I am at peace. And I'm going to do my best to stay that way. In fact, we're working on things. We're getting things together. I'm getting things that the Lord told us to do for the month of May because we're not going to have access to it in the near future. So with that all being said, I love you all. Um, and we are praying. Any prayer requests, we are praying. God bless all of you. Until the next time, shalom.